episode six of the boys had a lot of issues and was kind of weak. And I just hope the writers have some sort of end goal in mind because I guess it's obviously a, a setup for the final season. But so far, it's been filled with like weak episodes and bad writing. So it starts off with Butcher forcing Samir to replicate the virus and make it strong enough to kill Homelander. And straight from the jump, I'm not a scientist, but I wonder how he would know when it's strong enough to kill Homelander. Like what or who could be tested on to prove that it's strong enough? Mind you, uh, it's already been tested on soups in the TV show Gen V, and they killed them, so, like, how would he know just how much stronger to make it so he can kill Homelander? Anyway, uh, A-Train tells MM that Homelander was gathering soups together as if they were an army, and he saw Sage talking to Tech Knight. And then so MM gets the intel that Tech Knight is having a party at his house, and plans to infiltrate it by the place and see what's going on and uh, to hear what they have to say about their meeting. And the plan is to sneak Huey in, wearing Web Weaver's costume, who was basically like a Walmart ripoff version of Spider-Man. And now a large ju- a large chunk of the episode takes place in Tech Knight's dungeon, and Huey, while pretending to be Web Weaver, is. And the creator of the show even said that he viewed this happening to Huey as hilarious, which is why I partly decided this episode. It just seems like... They're relying on a lot of shock value to, you know, as momentum for the show. And yes, it's always had shock value, but it's also had good writing coupled with it. Now it just seems more of a tool to get people to be like, oh, yo, did you see what that show did? Or this episode is really crazy. Uh, while the show is writing, declines a lot with it. So, And then another problem I had was with the writing was um, some characters not acting normally or making the best decision, decisions. For example, Tech Knight has superhuman deduction, and he couldn't tell that Huey was impersonating Web Weaver until much later in the episode, despite Huey not having a web hole, uh, which he definitely would have seen when Huey had his back turned to him. And uh, even if Tech Knight did know that Huey was impersonating Web Weaver from the jump, the show didn't communicate with us that he knew. So most of the viewers, I can imagine, are probably are probably thinking that it was just bad writing or a poor utilization of Tech Knight's powers. So that's one problem right there, in my opinion. He also wasn't able to break out of the restraints when they had him like tied up before he dies. But uh, it's said that he had super strength in Gen V. So there's a bit of a disconnect there in his powers. But I'll let this one slide because... I think I've seen it a lot of times in like superhero shows where the person with superpowers is like captured or handcuffed to a table, for example. So it's whatever. Later on in the episode, MM, Annie, and Kimiko go in to rescue Huey because they know that something's wrong. And um, Sage, I guess, knows what's happening or she just happens to go upstairs where MM and uh, Kimiko are. And then Sage... No, yeah, so Sage is basically... Like, M.M. has OCD, and uh, he's having, I guess, he has a lot of stress building up for him, you know, a lot of time doing this and work and all that. And uh, Sage basically talks to M.M. and provokes him into shooting her in the head. And, again, I think she did it on purpose, or that's what I've seen someone theorizing. But, again, the show had, like, made no effort to communicate to us that she had a plan. So, right off the jump, it just comes off as plain stupid to try to provoke someone that has a gun pointed at you. Especially since, like, most people don't shoot, well, I imagine most people might not shoot at your head. They might just shoot you at your body. And only her head can regenerate. So she still has, like, a weak durability and regenerative capability on her human body. So she would have died if he shot her in the body. So that was a pretty dumb move to try to, like, provoke him. And then we have no reason for why she did that later on in the episode. And then now she has a bullet hole in her head. And she's supposed to give this big speech. Um, to convince, like, the powerful people at the party for a uh, home manager's plan to, I forget what the plan is, to be honest, but she's supposed to give this big speech. And home manager sees her with a hole in her head from the bullet wound. And he's just like, what happened to you? And then she's acting all like, kind of, um, not smart, not her usual, like calm and composed. She's kind of acting like a child. And then home manager's like, screw it, I'll do it myself. And home manager doesn't even question how she got shot or who shot her or the fact that there are intruders in the house. He just goes on with it. And that's not something that I think Homelander would do at all. Because, again, as the season progresses, we constantly see his sanity declining each time. And I think this season is, like, 
the one where he's most fed up with the boys and he wouldn't tell he wouldn't tolerate that at all but he just kind of lets it slide for the for the sake of the plot happening so that's another reason i didn't really like the writing and then my final reason i guess was um just sage's character so far in the show i'm just not like pleased with it so far because it just seems like every single time that the writer is um introduces the smartest character of all time or smartest character on the planet it always backfires in my opinion and people i think people say that their character is only as smart as the writers and respectfully i don't think the writers are crafting a well written story for sage to be smart so to me her character so far has been kind of useless or i just don't know what she's there for because her motivation her why for why she's doing what she's doing and what exactly she's trying to accomplish has not been communicated to me in my opinion and uh we get this brief scene of her talking with human and then we get a little bit of her backstory and then she's like you know her grandmother had leukemia and she created a cure for it and <laughs> that just made me more disinterested in her character because i could have done anything other than just saying that verbally in dialogue you could have showed us like a, a flashback of anything or I don't know, he just, he just started off the episode with a flashback of Sage doing that, but they just said it like in dialogue. And prior to that, I thought by her being the smartest character, it was referring to her ability to manipulate people or understand how humans work. Not like every facet of being smart, like academic, research, science, mathematical. I had zero clue that she was capable of being that smart in that like regard. And they just said it plainly in dialogue with no flashback. And it makes me wonder, like, to what extent are you smart? You could, you could create like a, a superhero suit for yourself, or you could, um, create a suit for every seven member, or create a gadget to control people, to, to mind control people. But like, there is no limit to it. And because I don't know why she's doing what she's doing and what it is she's trying to accomplish, it just falls flat completely because I don't know how smart you are. And um, she also says that she created a cure for leukemia. And then she offered it to doctors and then they laughed at her. And then that kind of in and of itself is kind of hard to believe. But whatever. And then from that, it jumps to her thinking that all humans are animals. Even though her own grandmother died. So that was just like, in my opinion, I would have done, it would have done a lot better to change her story up. Or, again, a flashback to really have us be immersed in her backstory. But just saying it with dialogue alone, and then saying that, oh yeah, her grandmother died by leukemia, she created a cure and got rejected, and then all humans are animals. It kind of makes sense, but her grandmother is a human also that died, and it doesn't really make sense for her to jump from that into... I still don't know what she's trying to do. That's my point. I don't know if she's trying to dominate the world, if she's trying to kill the Seven, kill Homelander, kill everyone, I don't know. And the writers haven't told us that. And we are in the sixth out of eighth episode of the final season, or the, of the second final season. And <clears throat> so far, it just seems like a waste, basically, because I don't know what she's there for. And I also don't know what she's really done. She's only started the riot. That's like the most significant thing she's done this, this whole season, was start a riot between... Uh, the Starlighters and the Firecrackers. No, wait, the Homelanders. <laughs> and then that's it. And then she did. And then the little thing where she like gives Firecracker the tablet about the information on Starlight's abortion was not like, I feel like that was her own personal motivation. And that was not for any end, grand like end goal or in mind. So, so far all she's done is start a riot. No one she's being like tailed by MM. And then that's it. And then I still don't know what she's trying to do. So, so far, she's just an annoying character to me because she's been introduced as a smart character. But six out of eight episodes in, I don't know what her plan is. I don't know why she's doing what she's doing. Her motivation doesn't seem all clear or make sense. And her backstory is kind of like shaky or kind of trash. So she's just kind of there as a character, in my opinion. And they're not doing a good, good job with it. And I guess the only explanation could be like she's obviously going to have some sort of um, plot or storyline in season five. But I definitely still think you, you can do a lot more in season four. And or if she dies in season four, that would be the biggest waste of a character because I shouldn't have to get to episode seven or eight before anything major happens just before she's killed off. 
So um, I guess that's about it for my complaints about the episode. Again, we get the reveal that um, Butcher, like Joe Kessler, is fake, and he's like in Butcher's mind. Um, that was kind of, I guess, obvious, or it was leading up to that. Like it was kind of clear to most people, or it was implied. But um, I saw a comment saying that like this was more of a reveal to Butcher than it was to an audience, which makes a lot more sense. We're not meant to like be gasping at this like surprise reveal. Uh, it's more meant for Butcher, so I don't really mind that. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. Leave a comment down below what you thought about the episode. And uh, yeah, peace.